In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of derivatives of trigonometric functions. This is part two of that video series. So here's our example. For what values of x does the graph of f of x equals x plus 2 cosine x have horizontal tangent lines? So when I see this problem, if I see, okay, horizontal tangent lines, what do I know about horizontal tangent lines? Well, tangent line means it has to be tangent to the graph. Horizontal means that the slope is zero. So that means that we want the derivative because the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line to be zero. So let's go find the derivative. So if f of x is x plus two cosine x, so f prime is the derivative of x, which is one, and the derivative of cosine x, we wrote it for the previous video, we wrote all the trig derivatives, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So then this is going to be 1 plus 2 times negative sine x. So this becomes 1 minus 2 sine x. And we want the derivative to be 0, since we want to find the values of x where we have horizontal tangent lines. So that means we want to set the derivative equal to 0 to find horizontal tangent lines. And then solve that equation. So here we have to remember how to solve our trig equations and review our trig values. So that means we want the derivative 1 minus 2 sine x to be 0. Move the 2 sine x over, right? That's the one that's negative, so move it over to the other side. Isolate the trig function, so divide both sides by 2. So sine of x is equal to 1 half. So the question is, where is sine of x equal to 1 half? And so I have shared my little table of how I remember my trig values and you can do whatever it is that you used to remember them whether it's the unit circle or your triangles I I use this table so the sine of zero is zero and if you haven't seen this before right this is these are all my except for zero these are my denominators of pi so it's pi over pi over pi over, and these are all the square root of over 2, square root over 2, all of these, square root over 2. So when I see that I want the angle whose sine is 1 half, so where do I get 1 half for sine? That would be this one, which is pi over 6. So one of my x's then is x is pi over 6. But notice that it, the question doesn't say for what values of x between 0 and 2 pi, or there's no restriction on the interval. So that just means on the entire real line. So I have to find all the values. So I know that sine is positive on what quadrants? Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and quadrant 2, right? So sine of uh, pi over 6 is 1 half. So this is the one in quadrant 1. What's the one in quadrant two? So that will be go um, 180 minus pi over six. So that puts us at five pi over six or pi minus pi over six, be consistent in the notation, right? Radians. So five pi over six is the one in quadrant two. So those are my two that are between zero and two pi, but it didn't specify on a restricted interval. So I have to assume that we want the answers for the entire real line. So that means that uh, we're going to have horizontal tangent lines at every multiple, every 2 pi multiple of pi over 6 and every 2 pi multiple of 5 pi over 6. So this is going to be um, pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Right, so notice that um, if n is equal to 0, you get just pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. If n is equal to 1, what do you get if, it, if n is equal to 1? So you're going to go 
one revolution over, right? So what's pi over six plus two pi? So two pi will be what? 12 pi over six, so 13 pi over six. And then add two pi to five pi over six. So add, right, two pi is 12 pi over six with the same denominator. So that will be 17 pi over six and so on, right? If n is negative one, then you're going the other direction. So minus two pi and so on and so forth. So this is gonna get you all of them. So if n is two, three, four, so you just keep going around the circle. So looking at the graph of sine x, So this is the graph, not sine x, sorry, the graph of our function. So this is the graph of f of x equals x plus 2 cosine x. And so notice that what we found based on the derivative is that we have horizontal tangent lines at 5 over 6 and 5 pi over 6. That's between 0 and 2 pi. So that means this must be this one, right? So you have a horizontal line there. This must be at pi over 6. And then you have another horizontal tangent line there that must be 5 pi over 6. And then notice that there's a big gap. And so this is the other one. So this must be pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And then this one must be 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. So um, 13 pi over 6 and 17 pi over 6. And then this graph keeps going up. And then here, when n is negative one, so this must be the one that is pi over six minus two pi, so going the other way, right? And then pi over six, five pi over six minus two pi, and so on. And so you just kind of keep going. So this graph, because of that trig function, it, it has its periodic behavior. So this is gonna keep going also. And so that's, those are the places where you have horizontal tangent lines. So again, horizontal tangent means where the derivative is zero. In previous videos, I've done things like find, you know, the x values where the function has some other slope. So here, if I wanted to say where is the slope equal to one, then it's probably going to be in multiple places, right? So likely somewhere around here looks like the slope might be one. And so whatever value you find, you will have to then do plus the two pi and so on. Okay, so let's try another example. Now for this next example, find the derivative of the following functions. I have a, b, and, and c. So let's see, before we even start them, what would you do? So I have the square root of x, and then, so read it out loud, right? This, this is the square root of x, times sine x. So there's a times here, so that means we're going to be using the product rule for part a. And then here, g of x is the x squared plus 1 divided by secant x. So I can use the quotient rule. However, what do you notice about secant x? Secant x is 1 over cosine, right? So if you don't want to use the, the quotient rule, you can also rewrite the function. Rewrite g of x to be x squared plus 1. So instead of divided by secant x, if you think of it as divided by 1 over cosine, then this is just really x squared plus 1 times cosine x. Right? Dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So I can say that, and now I would use the product rule. So quotient rule can be used like that. You can rewrite the function so that, or I shouldn't say quotient rule, rational functions um, can be used like that. If you can rewrite it so that you can use the product rule instead of using the quotient rule, you can do that. Now this third one, there's no way I can, re I can rewrite cosecant x plus 2. So this one, I have to use the quotient rule. So let's try part A, and then we'll go to B, and so on. So let me copy it. Oops, hang on. All right, here we go. So let's find the derivative of f of x equals the square root of x times sine, sine x. So let's recall the product rule. So what does the product rule say? The 
product rule is if you have two functions f times g and you want to find that derivative, so I'm going to use the prime notation, then the product rule says the derivative of this is the derivative of the first, so f prime times the second left alone times g of x plus now the first left alone, so f of x times the derivative of the second. So let's try that here. So my root x, I can rewrite it as x to the one half. That's my first function. And sine x is the second. So f prime of x then will be, for a new product rule, the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x to the one half times the second left alone, so times sine x plus now the first left alone, x to the one half, times the derivative of the second. And let's do those derivatives. The derivative of x to the one half, here I need the general power rule, so one half x to the negative one half times sine x left alone, plus then x to the one half times the derivative of sine x. The derivative of sine x is just cosine x. And is there anything we can do here to simplify? I guess the only thing we could do is bring that exponent, that negative exponent to the bottom to make it a positive. So I'm going to have one. So things that are on the bottom will be this two from the one half, and then the x to the, neg to the negative one half will become positive one half on the bottom. But I have sine x in the numerator. So I'm going to have sine x over two, right, from the one half, and then x to the one half plus x to the one half cosine x. You can leave it like this. This is a perfectly acceptable acceptable answer for me. So if this showed up on a quiz, you can leave it like that. Um, the book may have you get a common denominator so that you you can simplify it further. So sine x over two root x really, changing it back to a radical plus square root of x times cosine x. And I'm gonna write it over one so I can see my common denominator easier. So the common denomina denominator is 2 square root of x, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 square root of x. And now we're going to have the same denominator, 2 root x. The top is sine x, and this is plus 2 root x times root x is just x, so 2x cosine x. And so this will be the fancy simplified version. <laughs> so if on homework um, you see answers like this, that means it's been simplified further. But what I wrote up here is an acceptable answer for me on a quiz or a test. All right, let's go to the second example. Let me copy it and put it down below. All right, for this one, now that I copied it and put it down here, um, we had the two options, right? I could have, what did we say for this one? We could leave it as is and use the quotient rule, or we could rewrite it as because secant is one over cosine and rewrite it like this and use the product rule. So either way, it should work out. So let me just use the quotient rule, or how about I do it both ways so you can see. Um, so using the quotient rule first, So quotient rule, what is the quotient rule? When you have f divided by g prime, so you have the bottom, so low d high, so this would be g times f prime, and quotient rule is minus. So low d high minus high d low. And away you go, squaring the low. It's over the bottom square. So here I have my top function and my bottom function. So then the derivative is going to be low, the bottom. So secant x times the derivative of the top minus, and the order here is important, right? So you have to do the bottom times the derivative of the top minus, so low d high minus high x squared plus 1 d low, the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom square. And let's actually take those derivatives. So I have secant x times the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x 
minus x squared plus 1 times the derivative of secant. So this is one of those that hopefully we start to memorize and assume that the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x all over secant squared x. And is there anything I can do to simplify? Now notice that we have a big subtraction here. So be careful, right? Don't make the, the little mistakes of saying, oh, I can cross out that secant and that secant squared. You can't because we have a big subtraction there. What I can do is noticing that I have a secant in the first term and a secant on the second term. I can factor that out and then I'll be able to cancel. So let's factor out that secant and I'll be left with just 2x minus x squared plus 1 tangent x over secant squared x. And now, right, secant squared x is secant x times secant x. So we can get rid of, we can cancel out, divide out 1 secant. So secant divided by secant is 1. And so we can simplify this. So what am I left with? The numerator will be 2x minus x squared plus 1 tangent x. If you want, you can distribute the tangent in there, but I'm not going to do that, over secant x. And again, you can change that to 1 over cosine and then multiply it through. And how about the other way? So if I use the product rule instead, so if I have this, and to use the product rule, I will then need to rewrite it. So I will say here, rewrite to use product rule. So how do I rewrite it? Rewrite it? Well, I know the secant x is 1 over cosine. So then this is really g of x equals x squared plus 1. Dividing by 1 over cosine is the same thing as multiplying by cosine over 1. So just cosine. And now I can use the product rule. So g prime will be, product rule says the derivative of the first times the second left alone plus the first left alone times the derivative of the second. And let's find those derivatives. So here I get to the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x times cosine x and then plus x squared plus 1 times the derivative of cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Now here, notice that I am multiplying. So I don't, don't, if you don't put parentheses there, it might look like x squared plus 1 minus sine x, but be careful, you're multiplying this. So this will be 2x cosine x positive times a negative becomes negative minus x squared plus 1 sine x. And that's my derivative. Are they the same? Well, yes. If I rewrite my secant x, right, we know that secant x is 1 over cosine. So again, that means that here I'm dividing by 1 over cosine. So dividing by 1 over cosine means multiplying by cosine over 1, the reciprocal. And I have 2x minus x squared plus 1 tangent x. So when you distribute the cosine in, you're going to have 2x cosine x minus x squared plus 1. Tangent is sine over cosine, right? So when you multiply cosine x to sine over cosine, the cosines will cancel leaving you with sine x. And now you can see that they are, in fact, the same. Now let's try part C. Now for this one, I do have to use the quotient rule. I don't have an option to rewrite it to use the product rule. So use quotient rule. So make sure that you are memorizing your product rules and your quotient rules. So you don't have to look them up every time. Um, so I have my top function. So this is my f and my g, or my high and my low. However you remember the uh, 
the quotient rule. So h prime of x would be low, so the bottom, cosecant x plus 2 times the derivative of the top, And I'm using quotient rule, so minus the top e to the 2x plus tangent x times the derivative of the bottom, cosecant x plus 2, all over the bottom square, cosecant x plus 2 square. So low d high minus high d low, away you go, squaring the low. Um, so let's now take those derivatives. So I'm going to have cosecant x plus 2 times the derivative of this. The derivative e to the 2x is 2 e to the 2x, right? You always get the exponential back times that constant in front of the x plus the derivative of tangent x. So what is the derivative of tangent? That is, if you go back and look it up, um, it will be secant square x minus the top left alone, so e to the 2x plus tangent x times the derivative of cosecant x plus 2. So on that chart that I gave you with all the six derivatives for the trigonometric functions, the derivative of negative, co of, sorry, of cosine x is negative cosecant cotangent. Oops, running out of room. I said cosine x is cosecant. The derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant cotangent all over the bottom square. Now, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but notice that minus there, right? So be careful not to say, oh, I can cancel those. You can't, because out of operations will tell you you have to do this whole numerator before you can cancel anything out with the denominator. So this one is not very fun to try to simplify. So I'm going to try to write smaller. Let's see, can we simplify? Is there anything we can take out? So let me see, we have cosecant x plus 2 and 2 e to the 2x plus secant squared. So there's nothing in common here, minus, and then e to the 2x tangent x, oops, plus, and then times a negative cosecant x cotangent x. I don't really see a good way to simplify this. So this one is just kind of messy. The only thing that I can see we can do is we can say, well, this negative, right, you're multiplying. So these, you can combine those two negatives to give you a positive. So I can rewrite this and then plus this without that negative there. Um, we could also try to foil and multiply it out, but it's just getting a little bit too crazy. So I can just leave it like that. So in a quiz or a test, um, we can, you can just leave it like that if I just want the derivative. <laughs> um, as we get into more of the other rules, like chain rule, some of these are going to be really ugly to simplify. So I'm going to try to make sure to let you know like when it's okay to leave something unsimplified. Now the one thing I just, again, I want to point out is don't make the mistake of saying like, oh, I can cancel these. You cannot. Why not? You're subtracting, right? There's this big minus here. So you're supposed to do this minus this before you can cancel anything. And just to bring you um, an example of what I mean, right, is like if you had 2 plus 7 over 2, right, can you say, oh, I can cancel those 2s? No, right, because out of operations tells you you're supposed to do this first. Add that. So 2 plus 7 is 9 and then divided by 2. So notice that this is 4.5. But if you cancel those 2s, your answer will be 7. and That's not correct. So that is the same thing happening here. So just watch out for that. Don't cancel those because you have to do that big subtraction here first or addition now that we change it to addition. I hope that makes sense. Um, in the next video, I'm going to do some more examples of finding derivatives with uh, trig functions and finding second derivatives and also doing like acceleration in those types of problems.